Divas, Augustus the God. August 12th, B.C., an altar was erected to Augustus Caesar in Gaul, and he was made a god of the Roman Empire. That was the most outstanding event of the year, although it was an eventful 12 months for the entire family. In the first place, Agrippa died. Julia was again a widow, and now she had four children, and a fifth was soon to be born. Gasus and Lucius, the two small boys, who were now about six and eight, had been adopted by their grandfather as his heirs. He adored them and was also fond of their little sisters, Julia and Agrippina. As for Julia herself, she was still young and lively, and Augustus thought needed another husband to look after her. Casting about for a suitable third son-in-law, Augustus chose his elder stepson. This was a blow to Tiberius. He had never cared for Julia. He was already married, truly in love with his wife, and most reluctant to divorce her. But he was obliged to comply with the request of Augustus. Tiberius and Julia were wed. The marriage was to go fairly well for a short time, but Tiberius was too sober and silent for the lively Julia. While he was away in one of the providence, she found wild companions and more exciting lovers and became to seek pleasure in ways that were eventually to lead to her tragic end. Drusus, Livia's second son, the younger brother of Tiberius, was now married to Antonia, the gentle daughter of Octavia and Antony. Ruddy and full of enthusiasm as ever, he came back for his brother's wedding from the border of Germany. His boyhood dream of crossing the Rhine into German territory had now been realized. Each year, for the past three years, Drusus had led an expedition into the deep German forests. He had also been in charge of building fornications along the Rhine as a protection against the German tribes, who had again invaded Gaul and crucified Roman citizens. Pushing through the morasses and marshes in the north, he had dug a channel from the Rhine through the Zadir Zain into the North Sea. Now this year of 12 BC, Drusus was made governor of Gaul, and he and Antonio, Antonia went to live in Lyons, which was the Roman capital. It was an old town of the Gauls and a great meeting place of the tribes. There, every spring, the Druid priests had held court, judging and settling all the disputes that had arisen among the people, divining the will of the gods and offering sacrifices. The power of the Druids had now been broken, their rule replaced by Roman law, and those Gauls who had become Roman citizens forbidden to take part in the old sacrifices. As a substitute, the Gauls were now given a new god to worship, Augustus, the emperor of Rome, Augustus Divus. Divus is the Latin word meaning godlike or divine. The first altar to him was built by Drusus at Lyons. On the first day of August 12th BC, it was solemnly unveiled. Delegates from 60 of the old Gaelic tribes were present for the ceremony. A priest was ordained, high priest of Rome and Augustus. And from then on, the first of August, each year, Pilgrims were to come from everywhere in Gaul to worship at the altar. Similar altars were also erected in many other towns of Gaul. On one of them, the following inscription was engraved. The people of the city have dedicated this altar to the divine Augustus and avowed him an annual feast forever. May this, to the honor and glory of the Emperor Caesar Augustus, son of the divine Julius, father of our country, sovereign pontiff, and to honor and glory of his wife and children and the Senate and the Roman people and of this town which dedicates and devotes itself forever to the worship of his divinity. This declared Augustus a god. This declaring Augustus a god did not mean that there were any other thought of him as God, the creator of the universe. Making him a God was more like making him a saint in the Roman Catholic Church of today. He was a patron saint of the Roman emperor, Empire. The change grew more or less reasonably out of the old Roman religion. When the death of the former high priest left that office vacant, Augustus had become Pontifus Maximus, 
there had always been a law that the Pontifus Maximus must live in a public residence. But Augustus did not care to move into one provided for the other high priest, so he presented part of his palace to the state that it might be considered a public residence. His hearth fire was then looked upon as a public hearth fire, as sacred and important as the one in the temple of Vesta. His lars and pinnacles also became those of the state, and as it in every Roman household, the genius or guiding spirit of the family father had been worshipped. It did not seem strange for the genius of Augustus to be worshipped as the guiding spirit of the empire. Although Augustus allowed no altars to be built to him in the city of Rome, altars for his worship were built in all the army camps and also in all the providences of the east, where it was long established custom to bow down before kings and rulers as being gods on the earth. In all of this world, one people only refused to worship at his altars. They were the Jews. They would pray for him if they must, but they would not pray to, to him. Proud and intense in their obedience to the law of Moses, they worship but one God, Javan, God of our nation, and they would have no other gods before him. Elsewhere, Everywhere else in the great city of the empire, temples and shrines were erected to his worship. Natives of every subject law, from the Euphrates River to the Rhine, added him to their other gods and offered prayers to him, and in this one act as the em empire was united. Thus, it was that August Augustus, supreme magistrate of the Roman Empire and its first Roman, also became its god, Augustus Divus.